Instead, I, they included two I can U.S. ones. I show you how to put the nails into the mains. <laughs> Well, no. well no, th- 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 then, then Pedro's going to have another pine box he has to contend with. Either that or a superpower. I'm willing to... And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. This show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, on tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else. We come up with, man, I thought, I thought we were going to have trouble filling the show. Then, like, Thursday and Friday showed up just went... Pfft. Laid it on the that's, table. Yeah. That, that's what usually happens, though. Like people, people tend to release stuff near on the weekend. Thursday. I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, it comes out of nowhere and just flops all around, all over this mythical table. Hey, everyone, I'm Vince Stone. That that dulcet toad up there. That is one Jordan's fang. This way. Ha. Hello. Wait. Technically right. Either way. Anyway, Pedro Mateus, the man on the Hi. island. You know him. You love him. <laughs> Staying up late past his bedtime, along with you at home. Shot realm dynamic, helping us form. This cute, family-friendly little thing we like to call Cocaine Voltron is 2020. What are you doing, Jordan? That's nasty. I, I Listen, man, I'm, I'm just playing with my hands. That can also be nasty. There are worse things that there, you could be doing with I, your hands, yes. I wash them beforehand. They're clean. It's fine. <laughs> okay, don't worry, fine. Don't worry, oh, so don't worry about it. those things. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> have you been up to anything, Jordan? Or the gym's open? Have you ever been able no. to push anything? Dude, I, I saw that picture and you said they were going to be doing that in Toronto was check this out. If you didn't see it um, in our Discord, like the gyms are in it was like a three sided with just plastic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So apparently that was that was a I class. I looked at that. I thought I can smell that over the internet. Yeah, the stag box. Mm, <laughs> basting. Yeah. So uh, appa- apparently that's in Gold Gold's Gym in California. I gotta wait until I, I I got I got the news. I gotta wait until the twenty fifth of July before the gyms in my area reopen. Mm. Uh. So. Uh, man, man, my my I I have come to realize over the past like what six months now. Yeah. So much of my ADHD coping strategies and like autism coping strategies had to do with the fact that like, okay, well, I'm just going to go stand under a 400 pound barbell for a couple hours and it's going to make all my problems seem insignificant in comparison to a half ton weight that's on my back or a quarter ton weight that's on my back. So, um, yeah, no, I've, man, I've been doing groovy programming all week. I've been so fucking busy writing groovy scripts all week. My God, it's too much. Uh, I'm sorry. That sucks. I mean, it really does. It's like to get... it's it's it, it's like Java, but worse. That's oh. the best thing about Groovy. It's like let's take let's take all the syntax from Java. And let's try to make it Python. Nah, no. that's not. Pedro, how are you coping with the everyday daily struggle that is working at home? If only I could actually work from home every day. <laughs> now I'd have to go into the office at least once a week. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, uh, I would very much like to work from home because apparently I get a lot more done when I'm at home, go figure. Uh, But my coping mechanism usually involves laptops, and I mentioned this on Wednesday, but uh, Pinebook. Pinebook Pro finally arrived. I can't can't have the NVMEs on it yet. See if I can. That's awesome. I love that they only (laughs) send you part of your Pinebook, man. I mean, that's. Yeah, no. Like, the Pinebook itself is complete, but I have to charge it via USB-C because they didn't include the um, EU uh, power adapter that they said they would. Instead, I they included two can, US ones. I can show you how to put the nails into the mains, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, no th- 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 then, then Pedro's going to have another pine box he has to contend with. Either that or a superpower. I'm willing to take my chances. Indeed. <laughs> But yeah, and they also forgot the uh, little ribbon cable that connects the NVMe uh, board to the motherboard on the laptop. So, yeah. For, but for, forget or just la- laughed at you while they shipped it separately? It's a little bit of yellow. Um, I'm, I'm going to say this, man. Your yeah. book, it works and it charges. So you came out ahead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I've I've read some horror stories in the meantime. <laughs> did, did did you find any dead pixels on your monitor? I looked. I even put like a you know complete white background. It's like, all right, Hi, let's Google. have a look. See, it's like, no, that's good. <laughs> so if there are any any dead pixels, if they're on the rim, that doesn't show. Bo- so that's bonus good. soda, right? Like, <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> um, oh, I want to give a 
big shout out to a completely unsponsored Express VPN. Have you ever used them? I have not. I had to uh, use them, and I'm going to say this 100%. I had to use it to test an activation thing. It's like, whatever. And they're like, hey, man, a month, you don't need it. It works. Their Linux thing works. And they give you your money back for real. I got my fucking check back from them. All right. Because it's like, it I didn't work for, for the thing. Well back. And <laughs> so I, I, I'm I, just I, saying, good on you, keeping your word. I didn't, you know, right. sometimes you don't expect that. I thought it was going to be some hassle, and it was like $12, too. So I wasn't going to like chase after it but they're like yeah oh, here it is yeah I, I i just have my own points of presence thanks to linode and i just vpn into those if i need them but yeah i mean the, the well the nice thing about like uh these vpn services is they give you like points of presence in different countries i guess yeah which might which might be good for me because i'm running out of stuff to watch on netflix <laughs> no and pi pi is actually really nice to the linux community because they've already helped a couple of projects out Krita, they bailed them out when they had their little cock up with the taxes. So that was really nice. <laughs> that that was part of the reason it's like, oh, 70 pounds and I get five years with five computers at once going on one account. It's like keeping a persistent right. VPN for me is like <laughs> you need it once a decade for me. Like, ugh. I mean, yeah, I, not I, when it, you're in the UK and half the content is region locked to the US. Yeah, or, that... or, or or when you're spending your days working <laughs> remotely and you're like, man, I really need these internal resources. <laughs> but goddamn, the host internet connection is so fucking slow. Oh, man. <laughs> I just want to give him a little bit of a shout out. Uh, kind of like we need to shout the horse out. Oh. I mean, the horse isn't very concerned about your privacy. Horse isn't concerned about anything because it's dead, really. It's the Steam Linux of the day. Speaking of dead. dead. No. Done, done, done. No. Yes. Yay. Left five, Brad four. Uh, three. <laughs> yes. Manchester United two. What? Check it out, man. Check it out. Of course, this comes from the Valve News Network, which means it's speculative bullshit. But damn it, if I don't like a nice little chunk of that. But here's a bit of trivia for you. Connecting from Left 4 Dead 2 client to a Source 2 server would produce no meaningful messages. And that's kind of in response to... That Valve News Network, like, hey, we discovered the server. It's been around for a while, and we can't connect to it, and we're just not getting any errors, and people are playing on it. It's that lighthouse map that was never ported over from the original campaign. Maybe. Equals, equals, Left 4 Dead 3, confirmed, right? On source 2. 100%. I, 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 I mean, I mean, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. If you if 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 you watch the video, they go into it. Uh, there's like a there's a server activity monitor for all the official uh, Valve servers. Um, they found they found a couple of these servers couldn't connect to it. Uh, apparently, they're running a radically newer version of the client and network protocol, which makes sense because apparently concurrently there was about 21 players on that server. Could mean mm -hmm. that they're testing some massively multiplayer left for dead stuff which would be really cool it also makes sense that they'd have to overhaul the protocol because if you want to support that many players you got to do some uh, you got to do some tricksy business in order to do it um there's there's a lot of like reddit hive mind twitter hive mind speculating like oh this is this going to be a source 2 port of left for dead or they're going to be like this is going to be left for dead 3 i don't know for all we know like i was saying in the pre pre super shows and this could just be another one of these valve projects that will never see the light of day i just got to the point where they're testing the multiplayer stuff it might get recycled for another thing who knows <laughs> and it's valve why update the game at all when you can just you know port the old left for brad campaign to left for brad 2 and away we go mm. i'd like a source 2 port I, I would like to see some vulcan supporting that 16 player matches though that would be I, i'd like to see what they do with that if we get something you know a little, crazy yeah. or a little sideways yeah there, there there's there's definitely some room where they could like because because like left for dead one and left for dead two were pretty much carbon copies like left for dead two added a couple more maps but like when you when you see when and you look at the difference weapons. between yeah when, when when you look at the difference between something like um half-life one and half-life two or like well i mean not necessarily portal one and portal two but even portal two added a lot more stuff like it was fairly radically departed from the previous entry so i'm interested to see how they're gonna progress the left for dead series if at all if this is nothing if this is not nothing well we were talking about the previous -pre super shows and, and yeah i was definitely with i just got like the i don't know if it's because alex came out and the previous work with like the card game that ate all the poo if something like this dropped 
And with Valve, I firmly believe it would just come out of like fuck all nowhere out of the sky. And like, that's thing, like, yeah, it tracks. That tracks. I'd be happy. I don't know if I'd be surprised. I mean, I mean, I mean, it would, it would track. They, they were basically saying a while ago, like, yeah, the big mistake we made with Left 4 Dead 2 and all of the, the, the expansions that we never released was we announced them and that got people all hyped up. So maybe we can't maybe we do just three. Gotta... They just can't do three. It's got to be Left 4 Dead 2 VR get wrecked edition because all you're going to do is wreck your damn house if you're playing Left 4 Dead in VR. <laughs> <laughs> maybe valve's opening up like a home insurance thing as well that, that, right. that's that's it's the vertical the integration service from the inside and you do it yourself <laughs> yeah all right uh client betas yes and uh valve have been keeping up with the uh, client betas and uh on june 15th they released one it had a couple of uh linux fixes it also had a um the the thing that I noticed was the uh, fix the overlay activating if you're using the Steam controller in big picture mode and you do like the um, hold down the uh, Steam button and hit the left trigger to take a screenshot, the overlay would open after that. And I always thought that that was intentional because you saw like the, oh, you took this screenshot. You want to do something with it? Apparently not. But uh, Jordan, what are the uh, Linux fixes? Well, uh, so Pedro is actually nice enough to include a little spreadsheet in the, or not spread, slideshow, <laughs> slideshow spreadsheet. Slide sheet. <laughs> so, yeah, some, some, some sort of document in the show it's notes. Uh, talk, oh no, talk, that's talk, something completely different. <laughs> welcome back to Linux Gamecast Spreadshow, It's baby. about butter, After you dark. monster. <laughs> Indeed. It's about butter and cream cheese. Anyways, um, so uh, the, the note here is updated Scout Steam Runtime. So Scout is actually um, the containerized Steam Runtime. Uh, there's, uh, there's, like I said, there's a slideshow in the show notes uh, Pedro posted, as well as all the other links to these stories, uh, by the way. Um, and yeah, so Scout is the containerized version of the Steam Runtime. They've updated it. They're still apparently working on uh, some containerization issues. Um, the slideshow does also include a bunch of details about like what they tried, like fully containerizing Steam. Um, containerizing individual applications, some of the um, some of the issues that they're running, and it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, from like containerizing games, there's a, it. It really goes to show there hasn't been a lot of work on like container graphics, which I think maybe this is something that Microsoft's kind of getting ahead of with the WSL. Uh... Did you see what Nvidia did for the WSL? And they're like, yeah, yeah they, 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 they got CUDA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but 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 yeah, like yeah, Microsoft of all people is kind of paying attention to that, and I think. There, 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 there's some there's some value to be had from that work. Um, that said, there is another thing that got fixed uh, for Windows, but you know we got to keep an eye on some of the Windows fixes because sometimes they trickle down into Proton. Apparently, there's been some Origin overlay fuckery because Origin has a Steam overlay too, in addition to the Steam overlay. So the people on Yo, Windows, no, mm -hmm. when they try to do the overlay, they get both overlays and fucks things up. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we're gonna get weird crap like that under Linux because of Proton and just. It's definitely a thing you had to do because one of the um, ass ends creed that I had, you had to like disable the overlay inside of the origin launcher that you launched. You play. Steam. Yeah, you play whatever the hell it was. <laughs> Ubisoft, yeah. It, it, it's a fact. No, what it is, Pedro, is not Steam. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like I, I just clicked my game launcher to open another game. All right, fine. Whatever. Um, hey, they also did something. A lot of people are happy about. Um, they're tackling the bots in Team Fortress 2. This has been a problem for like the last two months, man. And the latest update, it's been out and it will be applied automatically when you restart so you don't have to do anything. And it's going to do things like restrict certain accounts from using chat and official matchmaking because a lot of people have been complaining about, well, a bunch of naughty typey words and um, a couple of their, you know, just fixes to the game and all that. The spam but bots. It's mainly to tackle the spam problem, which I'm going to say, good on you, Val, for getting around to it. Because guess what? Team Fortress 2, not a new game. Not a big moneymaker. People have kind of gotten tired of buying ads. But Yeah, I, th I think people like kind of moved over to Overwatch after well, a while. It's still in for like Steam games, man. It's in the top 10 of most played games to this yeah. day. Yeah, but... I mean, but it's you, no you, CSGO you, you, or Dota 2, but yeah. it's there. Exactly. Yeah, and, and 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 you and you got to imagine that the people who are actively playing TF2 right now, they're bought in. This is the this is their game. This is the game that they play. It's like 
going into like a speedrunners online match. No, don't 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 try and expect your filthy casual ass to survive. Uh, one one other one other thing they added here is uh, when you're reporting people, they're going to give you more. Uh, they're going to give you more information about who you're reporting. I'm not sure what that actually means. Like if it's going to show Home address like, what they had for breakfast. Yeah, like or like the the client version, their IP address. I I, I don't know, but it's probably uh, going to be the same thing that you get if you go check their Steam profile and you hit the little arrow next to their name and you see like the previous names that they had mm. it's eh. probably that <laughs> may, may, maybe more i don't know but anyways they're, they're, they're trying to like get rid of griefing accounts and spam accounts which like vince says it's a good thing for like the long-term <laughs> health of the game it has to be i mean there's a very fascinating talk um given i think it was in 2018 mm. on gdc you can find it on their youtube channel about the guy who started the deep learning for you know spam and uh cheat detection and going through how the you know they came up like red team blue team to separate the cheaters from the not cheaters and it was like very interesting how they had to balance that out it's a fun watch mm -hmm. if you kind of dig that nonsense which no one likes cheaters man like they just don't don't be a dick right yeah you just, want to cheat just, in the single player game go right ahead but mm -hmm. keep it out of the multiplayer please yeah please <laughs> or 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 if you're gonna cheat in multiplayer, make sure that everyone on the server has cheats. So that it's kind of <laughs> that's that my favorite cheating. <laughs> my 100 percent favorite thing is when developers identify cheaters and stick them and match this together. Yeah, no. Uh -huh. I'm like, how about actually? I would pay money to watch that show. It's 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 like the steroid Olympics, right? I kind of want to see like what Unlimited. all these juiced out dudes yeah. can do, right? Who like, brings who brings yep. the best cheats? To, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Like okay. that would be that would be that would be kind of fun. Pedro, um, you've been talking about this game on and off and on and off, and this is the first time I've even seen like the title card for it. So tell me about yeah. it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta call out last, Scott. Yes, this is last epoch, and uh, it was Scott who made us aware of this in Discord because he said, "Yo, I did some work on this game, and they have a Linux version. So why don't you guys have a look?" And I looked at it. It's like, oh, it's like your Diablos and your Path of Exiles and whatnots. So uh, yeah, I. Gave it a look, and the first version didn't run terribly well on Linux. It was single-threaded, like, all the way. You had one thread at 100%, and the rest of them were doing nothing. Um, eventually, though, they did uh, manage to uh, fix that slight issue, and the game runs much better now. And the latest version, Ooh, they actually 60, only mentioned... Yep. Uh, they actually mentioned one of the uh, the one Linux fix, which is fix the bug uh, where character introduction videos would fail to play on Linux. This meant the game got stuck in a black screen when creating a character requiring a game restart, which I admittedly I ran into this when I created the one character uh, 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 that I have in this game. Okay, okay, pa Pedro, but... Pedro, hold on, hold on a second. You've seen you see the text in this trailer. They've lifted that font directly from Diablo. Did they not? I'm not, I'm not, it I'm not tripping. Very much like Diablo 3, yes. <laughs> yeah, they, they are, they are ripping that font off. <laughs> yeah, no, it is very much in the Diablo and Path of Exile and Torchlight. Uh, Does Diablo have time play. travel? Um, yes, in, the, in that, like, I'll start playing it and then I'll travel forward in time several hours and not realize it. <laughs> so it's like a bed. <laughs> yes. But yeah, it's Diablo with, um... Time travel, um, you, you literally walk into time rifts and you can visit, it's, you can see the map and the moment you open it, you have like four different eras and you get to go to all of the eras at different points in the game, but it plays very much like Diablo and it's already taken away like seven hours of my life. So I no, no, ask no. you, man, like on a scale of zero to 48 gigabytes, how big is this game? Um, I'd have to look it up, but it's not particularly big, I don't think. I would say it's probably right see. around 48 gigabytes, that's what it says you need to install. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't and, think it was that big to download, let me see. I don't, I don't, I don't know, when, 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 whenever, I, whenever I see these gigabytes. Diablo, whenever I see these Diablo style games, I was like, where's the multiplayer, Scott? Where's yeah. the multiplayer? <laughs> <laughs> I want to click with my friends. <laughs> oh man, yeah, uh... <laughs> Welcome yeah, they do have a multiplayer component because you can see that there's like a chat and you can talk in chat to people uh, yeah. around the world, but so, there is no multiplayer in game proper yet. So, so, so you can have lonely fun together. What yes. Is, when, when, when can I play as a spaceship? It's not Second Life. 
I just yeah. want to go down and fuck with him for a minute. I don't really, you know, I, you can just write me out after that. Great. <laughs> I, 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 I don't it's your know, maybe. standard hack and slasher clicky. Just it will destroy the uh, left click on your mouse if you give it the chance. I gotta say, just looking at the um, trailer, the combat, and that makes me long for it after the game we're going to be tangoing with this evening. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it is I, much I, better. The combat. I mean, yes. I, I, I mean, maybe you'd fare better in the Yakuza. I was about to bring up that level of combat because somebody totally missed this. This comes from R Linux underscore gaming. Um, where's the name? Uh, Crown Kronlist. All right, totally missed this. But Yakuza Seven is either going to run native on Linux, SteamOS, or officially with Wine. To which you'll say, the fuck. Um, beautiful boy. cereza so a beautiful cherry <laughs> this is cool um there's like a little steam logo on there so this could be 100 percent total confirmation so go ahead and do whatever you do or they could have just fucked well they have to populate the depots in order to get that so i mean well, we've seen that that's not yeah yeah, we, yeah. We, we've seen that that's not 100 percent <laughs> true all the time from that one game yeah that one so game you, we, that we, just we, we, packaged the Windows version and says this runs with Proton, and there yeah. you go, there's a, a Linux icon. I yeah. don't know. I kind of want to. Get, I, I will definitely feel free to write some emails about what your thoughts on the Yakuza's are to me because my take was I got Yakuza Zero. It was on like stupid sale, man. It was like a buck or something like that, you know, like five dollars. And I, I, I got to the part in the game, man. The only two ways to progress was to play building management spreadsheet simulator or like nightclub management spread. And we're talking just like static sheets, of like managing employees. And I just quit the game right then. I was like, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. Cause y Yakuza games. Get I was pretty eight crazy. hours in and I was like, Nope, not doing that. I, I mean, when like one of the missions is like, we need to teach this dominatrix to like talk shit about people. Yeah, but see, I'm down certain... with that. I, I learned how to like uh, two different characters. I was break breakdowns fighting and shit. I was like, all right, this, this is fucked up and it's special. Well, yeah, I don't that it just locked me into that progression path. And I'm like, no, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe if like you're, hor you're, you're repelled from spreadsheets, like, I don't know, a vampire to garlic. I don't know. Who's the publisher? The, uh, I think it's going to be Sega. It's going to be uh, Sega? Which, yeah. So, 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 the, the, Sega. so the theory is that this is, this might be Feral, because Feral has been porting a lot of Sega stuff lately. That'd be nice. Yeah. Indeed. Get a nice uh, but, Vulcan version. But we shall see. This may turn out to be a Street Fighter V or a Witcher 3 that is totally coming That's to That's still Linux, coming out, man. That's, uh, any, any, any second now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have faith. Believe a little bit. Uh, this so, is something I saw uh, when they were doing all the like game trailers and stuff like that. You know, last week when they were doing all the like, new game announcements, and uh, mm -hmm. I just saw this popped up, and it's also part of the Steam Game Festival Summer Edition. It's Skate Burb or Skate Bird, and you know they, they were ta burb. talking to the kid. Burp. I shouldn't say kid, twenty something that made this. And he's like, man, I grew up playing like Tony Hawk and all that, and those games just don't exist anymore. So, like, I wanted to remake it. And I like birds, so it's a bird. You can flap your <laughs> wings, but you can still play the Tony Hawk game. Like, right on, man. Um, I dig this. Now, the reason we're talking about it, this is going to be coming out in 2021. I didn't think anything of it. I was just scrolling through. There's a Linux version of the demo that you can play right now. You can get your own skate burb right on. And I never got, I, I missed that generation of consoles. This is already on PC. Did either of you um, play the Tony Hawks? I did, oh, yeah. but I, I, I had a weird intro because the one I had was on the Game Boy Advance, so it was kind of like a cut down version. Mm -hmm. um, oh. <laughs> but like you could you could still do all the tricks and shit. Um, so my, my my muscle memory for this game when I was trying out the demo was a little off. Uh, but yeah, like grinding manuals, grinding all on that pencils. stuff. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's like it's like action Hank with skateboards, you're right? A burb. Yeah, I mean, it, lo it, it looks perfectly you're fun. Really, yeah, you're what, really fat bird what, just what, riding around what, on one of those figure skates. <laughs> one one gri one gripe I have: you can't uh, at least at least when I was trying it, you can't use the uh, arrow the not the arrow keys the D pad for like doing skate manipulation. You got to use the analog stick, which is not great when you got to do the up down thing for grinds. Or See, that's animals. why I wanted to ask you about it because I don't I don't know how the mechanics worked. I back did in the day. keyboard just keyboard. I played uh, Tony Hawk's. Pro Skater 2, like, 
a lot in the early noughties because everyone in my class was playing it. It's just like, all right, fine, I'll play it too. I fucked it up a little fun. bit. I tried it with the x <laughs> controller and I got kind of ramp and I fell off and my chubby little burb ass just like rolled around hilarious. And I just like, that's that's awesome. Just keep going, little buddy. Then I finally reset. Yep. <laughs> one, 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 one thing I hope this game does get on release is like, one, one of the things that made Tony Hawk's Pro Skater really good was that they had really good licensed music, so hopefully they get a good soundtrack for uh, this game. Oh, that they have to pull out of the game the year after release. Well, I mean, may, may, maybe maybe spend some development money on hiring a music, musician or something. Musician. A musician. It's like a mage a musician? musician. But he transmutes audio <laughs> tunes right into your skateboard. It, into birds. Yes. It just, that's, where, that's, where, that's where the birds come from. Pedro, what do uh, I keep wanting to call this? Well, Jordan, I should say, I keep wanting to call this Trine 6. I can see why you would want to do this, but this is Tri 6, so it's 18, I guess. I, I, I don't sounds know. Sounds like something uh, you catch, man. Or No, it sounds indeed. like something you pull, man. Yeah, I pulled my Tri 6. I mean, I, I, I have some uh, Tri 6 tendinitis at, my, at this point. No, uh, so it's a uh, infinite racer. Uh, it kind of gives me a bit of uh, audio surf vibes, mm -hmm. given like the track and the, mm -hmm. the shape of the car. But um, you, you'd think, yeah, this might be cool. You can play it with your friends. You can play it with your friends Dude. In, split, in split screen. Jordan, but what like, was it? Was it the game we <laughs> Crowd Space? Remember that? Yeah, Crowd Space. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's there's a lot of. At first, I thought maybe it reminded me a bit of Kinetica, like on the PlayStation Two, but no, it's it's not quite that. Um, but yeah, like the the problem here is like the vehicle is so wide and the split screen is so narrow. I don't see this like I I feel they did not think this through until it was a little too late. But also, you're making a racing there's game with, with a narrow three shot. It's perfectly workable. If you have a uh, thirty-two <laughs> by nine screen, <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah they, they they do have a demo it's apparently planned to be released on july 17th with more but than if you, 300 obstacle variations it's just one only, obstacle oh, that just moves around a lot yeah, only three the only three vehicles anyway. though <laughs> which se which seems like an odd number i i would think like maybe have more as unlockables or dlc True. or something I, I don't know it seems strange to me but I, I it know. looks a little too slow paced for my taste to be honest Yes, mm. yeah. <laughs> but we'll get to another very slow-paced game in a moment. Uh, <laughs> Jordan, you bit the bullet on this. I was like, what the fuck is this? Ca cre creamy carrots, man. All right, so th this is carrots and cream. So I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't feel like paying two dollars to find out what it actually is. But it's apparently, memes. Uh, it's well, memes, isn't it? <laughs> uh, well, it's apparently it, it, not. It, it's a game about being a car being one of five carrots and being grown and farmed. Apparently it gives you it requires a little bit of pathos for carrots, but you know, I got to say fuck them unless they're pickled and in on a bon me, I think they're disgusting. Um so if, if I if I got to like murder carrots, you I'm not I'm not going to be shitting you. I got down to the reviews. I got down there it's an absolutely horrific tale involving vitamin rich carrots and thick delicious cream. Short but definitely sweet. Um, yeah, PC gamers like I'll never look at carrots quite. The, I think this is like one of those. Um, like what the fuck just went down? It's an art project. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I, interactive I mean, meditation on the violence of nature and nutrition, baby. Come on, what else could I, it be? I, I mean, for for, for for two dollars, <laughs> if 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 it gives you a good what the, the fuck? Like, I think, what are you talking about? Uh, oh, dude, yeah, it's, it's the Dark Souls of carrots of like rooted vegetables. <laughs> No, dude, dude, dude. Like potato is for potato is for noobs. Radish, get the fuck out of here. It's all about carrot. Carrot is the hardcore PC gaming difficult root vegetable. I don't even know what I'm talking Arise, about. Arise, carrot. Arise. Shh. It's only legend. Mm. Is it a root or a trunk? I believe it's a. I believe it's a root vegetable. You know what I can do with a carrot, Pedro? Stick it up your ass. Stab you with it. Also that possibly <laughs> I didn't you say it, I didn't say it would kill you, but motherfucker, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> you, could, you, 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 you could you could oh, stab you could make the stabby motion. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you could you could stab Pedro's ass with a carrot too. Uh, right after <laughs> I that's already we, got a hole in it though. Right after we finished the drag race, <laughs> dude. Yeah, dude, so I, I want some Dungeons and Drag Queens. Pedro, man. we talked about this game. It had the wheels we that were did. spinning too fast. 
Yeah, the wheels were spinning too fast and the cars were moving a little too slow. But it's one of those uh, like uh, hyper physics based racing games and the cars slide around a lot because when you do a physics based racing game, uh, it's like people forget that, you know, uh, inertia is also a bit of physics and uh, it's not just for you sliding off the track when you're attempting to turn. No, 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 no. You're supposed to have some grip on your freaking Singerp. rubber tires uh but no uh this one uh, it's not out yet they do have a demo like everything else in the steam um summer games festival so everything gets a demo i tried and... this out Pedro, in the upper right hand corner of the video have you seen that yeah <laughs> you see what's up i'll tell you what that is you're driving on this regular with a bunch of pine trees and you know dirt tr- fucking space plants all right somebody bought a space plant like pack no i gotta get some use out of it there's these random space plants hanging out i tried it out man because you know it's a racing game gotta try it out zero love for the native version for the excluding controller not a peep didn't even bother with ps4 no resolution settings okay but it does work with proton both of them and um space plants man but yeah splants i tried it and uh, is, did you get anything impossible? more than like it, this is a sliding around fuck you simulator at this point yeah no it's damn near impossible <laughs> to if you come from any other racing game even dirt rally or dirt rally 2 you come from one of those games and you're thinking yeah it's a rally game we're gonna do and you're off the track and you're off the track and you're it's like so, okay this I reminds me of power slide but that's demo. not on steam yet. i would call this more of a <laughs> concept <laughs> That's so pre-alpha. so so pre I, 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 alpha. I, I got a question for you though. Like, do you guys have you guys done any sort of like rally driving? Mm-hmm. Does um, it, 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 is, is it? Yes. <laughs> is 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 the point that they make about like cars being weighted at the center and that sort of being unrealistic compared to like weight being centered on all four wheels? Like, does that, does that have any merit? Is that like well, is that just or is that just bullshit? No, it depends on what you're driving. Is the previous owner yeah. of two 944s which are 50 50 balanced cars with the transmission in the ass and the engine in the front uh those handle different than like my 912 did which was all engine all ass but yeah but like rally cross stuff like that if you're just driving it's fun is what it fucking is it's just controlled yeah. madness well, it's sliding around now i'll take gravel fuck ice if you want to do it on ice go for it man <laughs> just i'm not going to be anywhere near that yeah on gravel absolutely well, but the, the- uh, I've they're, only they're, ever driven like front wheel drive cars. <laughs> the, the the reason I bring it up is because like uh, with with that realistic gun physics game from the Wolfire dudes, mm-hmm. I was curious like may, maybe maybe what you lose in the abstraction of like going from reality to video game um, is what actually makes it fun. And if you try to like replicate it a little too closely, then it loses the game See, aspect of it. You you can go two ways with it. Codemaster gets a lot of hate because they try to walk the center line and that just pisses mm-hmm. everyone off because it doesn't mm-hmm. work quite right. And it's not quite arcadey enough. You really need a steering wheel for your dirt rallies and shit like that. They don't play well with control. The only other way to do it is just say, fuck it and go full metal distance with it and just do the arcade racing where you can just, sideways fly but it's consistent this i don't think this person's ever been in behind the wheel of a vehicle mm. <laughs> they've only heard legend and stories they probably Mega ultra got car. all the theory uh, and all the physics it's like okay uh, it's got uh, four wheels so the vectors pull this way and it weighs this much and we're going to try and simulate that it's like oh god no i i, I just <laughs> had a horrible mental image and it's mega ultra clarkson and now, <laughs> and now, now I just want to go home. Um, no, no, keep going. But <laughs> yeah, I love Clarkson. It, it just has so much shit in its mouth. <laughs> just so much shit in its mouth. Full of hours. Um, <laughs> and steaks, undercooked or overcooked steaks. Anyways, uh, 3D Sun. Um, so this one's kind of interesting because it's an NES emulator on sale on Steam, which makes me go, hmm, I don't think Nintendo, I'm curious what Nintendo can actually do to fuck this. At but- least we're going to find out. What we will find out but but what this this is kind of neat because what it does is it will uh it will convert uh specific nes games it won't do it for everyone there's they have a list of them on their steam page um from like 2d to 3d you still have to like operate under the constraints of the old nes game but you get like 
volumetric you get voxels instead of pixels essentially mm -hmm. yep. which i mean <laughs> could be could be kind of neat i would like to see some like of uh, like like castlevania one where like they're trying to do some ambitious shit with like pseudo parallax scrolling maybe it looks a little better here i don't know but they're adding support for more games as it goes and it's a cool little project hopefully nintendo doesn't murderize it because they have something else similar in the works or they just don't want people to play their games like this but there's know. also that uh, um you know <laughs> this looks like it could go so hilariously wrong but in such a very entertaining way um since you do have to do some modification you just can't take a rom out of the box and it's going to work so yeah. i'm looking forward to that you know yeah you extrude some pixels mm -hmm. and you have added dude's also planning on he's like well you know for reasons early access i want to get some financing because I want to be able to switch some of these games into first person mode. And I'm like, do it, buddy. Let's, no, let's, that, that, <laughs> let's that, that, that would be fucked up. Yeah, let's go yeah. for it. But, but the, I'm the, down. The, 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 the other thing of with I'm this buying being a copy on Steam, after the show. Uh, with this being on Steam, remote, remote play, remote play. You can actually play Duck Hunt with your friends in 3D. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, 3D Duck Hunt, man. <laughs> we need a light gun that works off of LCDs, though. Wait a minute. Okay, see, if we're going to be playing Duck Hunt, the three of us can play it. Well, it's all, I think only two of us can play it. Because one person is the duck, and the other people, the other guy is the shitty guy. You can control the dog. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but, but it, right, but it's player, player two is the dog, player one is shooter. We can't do all three. What if we just play, like, two versions at one time? What 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 if instead like we I have one hand we each have like one hand on each controller and we all try to like coordinate. Okay, we play it through Twitch. <laughs> yes, Twitch plays three D duck see, hunt. So we need six iterations of the game running so that all three of us can play with each other. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Sounds <laughs> sound, sounds sexy. One coming one. up next. Um. <laughs> Coming up next, Ven is going to tell you to not buy a microphone and explain why. Also, Open Skyrim is real, man. It's happening. Ah! And it's right around that time when we need to take a bit of a break from all the linux -y stuff and uh, say thank you, all of you who are listening to us, because Pedro, you're awesome. do you know something I never want to take a break from? What? Flo floating in a lake? By my ankles. Upside Ankle down. floaties, a new product yeah. here at LGC. <laughs> Store. <laughs> Speak, speaking of speaking of we're, we're, we're looking at expanding the LGC store we'll get we'll get to that in a minute um but if, if, if you want to help us afford the patent on ankle floaties you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com we got a support button that you can put your mouse over it will lead you to all sorts of various links for like paypal oh, come oh on. god he, he's, ha he's having a little money seizure there. oh no ankle floaties Ankle floaties. <laughs> um, yeah, we 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 got, we got PayPal, we got Bitcoin, we got Libra Pay. Oh right. If you want, if you want, if you if the business thing. Sorry. Yeah, if if, if if you if you yeah, the, it's shill, it is shilling time. That's what the shilling pay is here for. Uh, for for the business reasons, I had to turn the penguin upside down. For business reasons, yes. indeed. Uh, well, we, we got, penguin. Well, if you want to support us for business reasons, we got a Patreon too. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash the next game cast. Uh, become a Patreon and you get access to our Discord channel and you can join us in multiplayer games. We just wrapped Serious Sam 2, so I got to find another multiplayer game that we can do. On I got one for you. Well, uh, you, you want to do the Youngbloods? We got to do it. All right. If, 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 you, if you and I want to do, do the Youngbloods on Thursdays, I'm down for that. Turbo Tango time. All right, sisters. So, okay. Well, no, 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 uh, no, no multiplayer on Thursdays. But you know what? It, it, it's still fun. You show up for the Friday foo bars and whatnot that we do on Fridays. Pedro is always in forever alone mode. Um, but yeah, access to the show notes is pretty cool. We get uh, you can have a little money penguin in front of your face, blocking you out. My mu it's it, it's it's my mustache now. Just smell the penguin butt. Yes, yeah, smell those ankles. <laughs> Smell that cloaca, baby. It smells like green. Um, yeah. Um, and anyways, we got we got we got a store. Store at linuxgamecast.com. We're not selling ankle floaties that just yet. Like a Pokemon. Oh, hang on. Yeah. No, no, no fun. It's sh it's shilling time now. No fun. Uh, yeah. So we we may have ankle floaties soon. We got to talk to Teespring about that. But until then, you can say your LGC merch needs with T-shirts, with coffee mugs, stickers. Um, for all of your apparel needs to cover your very eventually shames. the long, long um, promised fanny packs 
will be available. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, nice. We got we got wish zones too. If you go over, go back to that support menu, uh, we got one for myself, one for Ven in the studio, and one for Pedro. If you buy the stuff off that, uh, a couple of good things happen. A, you get your name on that glare filled wall behind Ven's head. What do you mean? B, I can read all that. It clearly there's no glare. <laughs> See, ha, ha. Ah. Wait. G- give, 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 give him a hand, folks. But bonus soda, you get to send us a little note that we got to read on 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 the stream and. Yeah. Uh, Pe- Pedro, what, what do you have to say about Artharin's big tool? Oh, hang on. Damn it, I was going to go <laughs> uh, I don't know uh, about his big tool because his note was not uh, very enlightening in that respect, but uh, he did say, Hey, Pedro, uh, it's too hot for me to think of any message to include, so just take it and shove it up your dot dot dot. Uh, and kiss the Nick Cage already, FFS, with hate, Artharin. Nay. Kiss, kiss him, kiss him. Brown enough. Use some tongue. No, not yet. Um, anywho, uh, he sent me an you I tease. It. <laughs> it's one of the teeny tiny little uh, kits, uh, but it comes with all of the Apple specific uh, screwdriver bits, which is nice. And Does it have the it Nintendo ones comes... too? The the, tri- the triangle ones, the tri bits. Uh, no, no triangles Damn on it. this one. <laughs> the other um, screwdriver set that I have does have the triangle bits, but it doesn't have like the pentalobes and uh, some of the teeny tiny security torx ones. Uh, Pedro, one we get it. We get it. You got screwed. Mm-hmm. Oh, he yeah. Got, he, got, he got screwed by our theorem. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved every second of it. Yeah. Well, there, there you go. Something, something, sponger. <laughs> That's dirty. That's nasty. You're a pervert. Um, I don't so, know if, if you pulled a sponger out of the bag and it was like dripping a little bit. Be like, huh? Right. Dripping yeah. with what though? <laughs> Where's my pumpkin? <laughs> it's, it's, it's. I turned it into a wacko lantern. A and anyways, um, speaking speaking of stuff to put on your wish list, uh, sometimes we put microphones and audio equipments. But here's one to not put on your wish list. What's that? Good to hear you. <laughs> It's an upside down penguin, is what it is. <laughs> Smells good. Mm. All right, goodbye, party, party yeah. penguin. So, 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 then tell tell people about the Elgato Wave Three. Sweet mother of hell, man. Um, I saw this. Mate, oh, here, let me show you everyone at home. This is what I saw after I did a search for it on the YouTube. I'm like, mainly because there's a guy yeah, check it every now and then. He only does a couple of videos a year. Uh, booth junkie. He's a fellow voiceover guy, and he's created a good booth. So. Uh, he knows how to record stuff um, to send out. This Elgato thing, it's like, oh, he's got a video, and you know I always skip like the first four or five minutes. So, you know, that's what you should do with us. And, hey, Pedro, Pedro, help me with how under, like, water pillow, it, it was like under six oh, pumpkins. Yeah, he sounded like he hadn't taken the microphone out of the cardboard box that it <laughs> came in. It's just like, that doesn't <laughs> sound <laughs> great. Dude, it sounded <laughs> Bad man. But when I'm showing up on the screen, Elgato wrote some checks. I mean, seriously, they did 100%. You know, I'm just throwing this in because this is an insult to cheap microphones. It is 100%, man. The Wave 3 is effectively, you know what? It's an insult to headsets. Headset mics. <laughs> It, it's it's so bad. you got to listen. There'll be a link in the show notes um, after the fact for this. But everyone's saying, and what I mean by everyone, if you go look on YouTube, it's like, this is the microphone to get. This is the best it, best, bed po- best podcasting microphone for 2020. These are legitimate titles that I'm not making up. Go fuck yourself. There's nothing wrong with it in sponsorship. <laughs> there isn't 100%. That's fine. Maybe, I don't know about review, but... It's straight up lying to people. All right. At least Booth Junk. It was I had an entertaining time watching him go, Wow, they've sure some uh EQ'd this not uh, just for my voice. You might notice what did he say? You might notice I don't sound anything like myself. Yeah, as uh, my voice uh, uh I'm used to listening to my voice because apparently it monitors his voice. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people do. Um, and my voice has a bit more bass to it usually, and I can't hear it with this <laughs> microphone, so you might want to look into that. And, but it's great. He's being so nice. He's like, but I think uh, it's EQ'd for... A p- no, no. It's like a $15 shit condenser mic that they're charging $150 for. You could take the $150 and buy yourself an nice AT2020, which is how much it fucking costs now. And it's USB. And it's the, not and even that like box, it's a lot. Um, 
an M box um, interface to plug the XLR version into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying that it's got some software with it and all that, but I know people watch videos and like, I'm thinking, you know, especially with like, Hey, I'm stuck at home. Maybe I'll do this. Cause I know they're going to spend some money to get this out there, which they clearly fucking have, you know, doing yep. sponsored products. Don't buy this piece of shit. Just $150. You can do a lot better. Cool. I just wanted to scream that at the beginning of the news segment. Isn't All that right. right? Is that how we communicate now, Pedro? <laughs> no, just, I'm just, just pointing just, at the 182020. Uh, it's like, uh, okay. I, 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 thought, I thought you were like rubbing your nipples or something. Mm, mm, tell me, tell me how that makes you feel. Mm, you're so frustrated. Anyways, um, <laughs> now, now, now onto the real news. Um, open more one, not open biohazard. We're talking about that second. We got open MW first. Um, we, have, we haven't heard from these guys in a while. They're doing the crazy business of trying to get, uh, the entire Morrowind uh, engine completely re-implemented uh, using um, not uh, it's open not open scene graph, graph. open scene graph. There you go. My my brain was like open SFML. That's not right. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so uh, they they have a couple big updates. This is the release for uh, not forty six zero. Scrolling through, one of the cool things I I noticed is support for loading compressed PSA format from Oblivion, Fallout 3, New Vegas, and the 2011 Skyrim games. Oh, 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 oh. S- open Skyrim has begun. The work has. Oh, oh, yes. oh, oh, oh. Skyrim's almost a decade old. I know, but it's going to be open source <laughs> yes. Skyrim. I'm excited for I that. My master's degree in 2011. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely going to be seeing, and instead of Pedro, it's going to be me walking around some fuck jacked up town with no shadows and the skies are on color and doors aren't going to open. And I'm like, this is awesome. I love this. Yeah, I, I Morrowind mean, it was already playable, not, but now it has shadows. It has in, shadows. In <laughs> boats. In, indeed, you're 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 also not not allowed to use any tame herbalism graphic anymore. It's all herbalism. about herbalism. Oh, yeah, gra- oh, graphic God, herbalism, wow. man. It's 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 horrific. Uh, there's also some more blood types they've added. So I want to know where my serious Sam hippie blood is. And uh, apparently corpse disposal should be safe in most cases. Thank, thank Wilbur's God. Wilbur's house, Skyrim, home of the Nords. <laughs> no, but uh, go on. No, I was just saying that's when I tapped out of Skyrim when they introduced the house thing. It, it wasn't because of that. I was just like, I, I, I've, had, I've had much. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> but yeah, no. I never played the Hearth Fire expansion. <laughs> no, but it, it's it's good to see that uh, Open Morrowind. They're they're pretty close to getting feature complete. They're just they're just fixing bugs. They're implementing some missing features, and now they're even looking at like bringing in some of the other uh, Bethesda games, which will be pretty cool once they get that working in twenty years. But still, it would be nice to have getting a the completely engine will well, yeah. be like. <laughs> I, I, I'll play the shit out of some Skyrim. I don't know why. I don't even like those types of games, but Skyrim did it. That was the first one I ever got into like that. Um, good on them. They're doing the flaws of getting monsters work. Indeed. Yeah. Go, go, go check it out if you have a copy of Morrowind. Or, you know what? You don't have to burn a heretic purchase on Morrowind because there's the Linux version you can play. So, yeah. Yep. Ta-da. <laughs> Makes you want to and- go... Makes you want to. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <Anyway>. All right. <laughs> Jill, what, what, what about Jill sandwiches? Open biohazard. Uh, you can. Well, this is what? you know the sequel to the Jill sandwich, uh, where you can play as uh, Leon the, the, Kennedy the, the, or the Jill Claire Burrito Redfield. Yes. Uh, this is Open Biohazard Two, and it's the open source reimplementation of the OG Resident Evil Two. And yeah, though you, if you really want to experience the uh, pixelated renditions of uh, Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield, uh, Leon this S. Is Kennedy, what you be. thank you very much. Leon, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is uh, the thing that you need to watch. It's not, you know, all there yet. Obviously, they do have some tick boxes, and it's like, there's no audio, uh, there's some collision so detection, lifelike. there's some event triggers, yeah, some of the uh, paths, uh, the pathing path is still being clearly shown in one of those screenshots, it's like, this is the Nevable Mesh. Alright, cool. <laughs> but yeah, it is, uh, it's a start. And it would be very, very nice if they actually managed to do it. Because yes, while you can play the new remake of uh, Resident Evil 2 in Proton, there is something to be said for preservation. So, yeah. 
In, indeed. Yeah. Uh, this, this, this is another one of these projects that's written in Go, which, again, it's cool to see Go being used to write some games. Um, they, you they, that, they, when you see Go, every time I, I see Go, I'm like, that's an interesting use. Like, But it's perfectly fine. And it's just like, oh, yeah. dude. Like, like, so, like, Kuber, like a uh, piece of technology I work with a lot, Kubernetes, is written in Go, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, th I think at this point it's mature enough. Um, and it's like now, now you're starting to see people like, oh, we need something that has some of the convenience of a higher level language, but is a lower level language. Language. I think and it's you don't the, want, it's it, it's 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 a good happy medium between something like C and Python. Yeah, I think. I, uh, man, I, I think it's just the whole thing of like my brain still saying, but didn't that just come out yesterday? I was like, no, it's been. A the, it came out like a decade ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's like it's a thing now. Okay, get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. One. 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 One thing I kind of want to see from this project. Uh. Mm -hmm. Right now they just have tank controls with, uh, the keyboard. Put in some SDL2. There, there is a SDL2 bindings for Golang, so you can get controller support because uh, keyboard tank controls aren't that great. Also, uh, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, the original, uh, was basically done on the RE2 engine. So getting this done may open up the door to uh, getting a native version of Resident Evil 3. Which, which was uh, the first oh, engine yes. that it went like over the shoulder. Um, that was four. four. Yeah, that, 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 that was four. Um, the the um, I think I think the other thing too is like a lot of people people were not, uh, Resident Evil Two remake was super well received. Resident e Evil Three remake people felt was a little truncated. So if you want to experience the original, that will be something to look forward to. I don't know. So what's this about like RGB and sound cards? Why do I need to hear sound and like taste my smells? Sometimes and... I want my head to blink. <laughs> said then never Except however for, yeah this one is about the um rgb rgbs on the sound blaster uh, x h6 which is a usb interface that you can use strapped uh, on linux and also already picks up on the audio bit so that was all working out of the box but um oscilloscope or sorry oscillope because that's how it's spelled. Is that, uh, is that like an antelope with like the an oscilloscope for a head? Oscillates. <laughs> it's an antelope that uh, oscillates. And, uh, Oscillating yeah, antelope. Apparently those have some um, RGB bits. Yeah. And you can absolutely um, get those to work because the USB is actually split into two. The audio thing, Alsa and Pulse Audio already pick up on it just fine. You could use it. But you couldn't control the little blinky bits. Uh, so, oh, no. Yeah. My blinks. Decided, you know what? I got to make this work. And he did. There's already a very basic bare bones type of thing that basically when you plug in the interface, it changes the um, LEDs to purple to say that they are connected. So now it's just a matter of customizing. Mm. And I, I was reading that. It's like, okay. This, this is an RGB thing. Can you go talk to the open RGB people and ask them if they want to have this in their project? Because we've already seen what fragmentation of um, the myth. RGB myth. space has done in RGB Windows. RGB Linux fragmentation is a myth. Wait, wait, wait. So, 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 so hold on. <laughs> Is, is is it fragmented into the red group, the bling, gr the bling group, the, the green, the green, the, the green group, group yes. and the blue you, group? You've been watching DS9 the recently. The bleens, group. yeah, yeah, um, the, 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 the the brain, yeah, dude. I don't know. I, what makes me happy is I I know there's someone out there, and also this person's. It's like making fun of the Amish. I know this person's not watching this show. Um, <laughs> who's like, yeah, I'll switch to Linux soon as these I can get my RGB control and. Hopefully, I find that it's like, oh, here it is. They're like, um, I, I love that point in every young man's life, <laughs> or they try to come up with another excuse. That's yeah, no, open RGB. If you if you are working on getting RGB stuff to work, mm -hmm. get in touch with the open RGB guys because they already have a lot of stuff working, like the aura syncs and whatnot. Most of that already works. So, get in touch with them. You think I could get all the RGB bullshit <laughs> working on my mom's one? Probably, but you need a side window to be able to see it. <laughs> also, it needs to be not facing a wall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why? Uh, wait. <laughs> How does RGB work? Does it have to be directly observed in order to function? Yeah, it's, yes, qu it's, it's like quantum RGB. Dude, it's, it's like... It's, a tree it's 
If it's not the, observed, does it really make a noise? No, no, no. See, see, <laughs> once, once quantum computing really takes off, we're going to see the quantum RGBs <laughs> that change color depending on whether you're looking at them or not. And it's going to fuck up and blow out the back of your head, but it's going to oh, look dude. beautiful. No, dude, dude, dude. What, what? Some guy's going to do a double take and a black hole is going to open up. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Bl Blendo Games, you might have heard of them. Uh, they put out a game a couple years ago called Quadrilateral Cowboy about being a hacker using a 56k modem to hack into things. Uh, and and now they've posted a bunch of their games on GitHub. So if you want to take all of these Unity games and hack around with them and make your own thing, you absolutely can. Uh, also in this repo is a graphical Unity uploader that only runs under Windows, but I'm pretty sure would run fine under uh, Wine, I guess. But yeah, uh, all, all the games have source code available now. Uh, Blendo is open source them, which is really nice. It's good to see people actually open source their projects so people can build on top of them or make their own games. It's how open source feeds into like good quality software development by giving people functional examples to work from. But, and but Jordan, I downloaded it and I can't play the game. A. Uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to point you know, the out thing is that the my, art uh, assets for the game are not free. So you're still going to have need to get a hold of those. You're going to buy the game, but that's yeah, true. This is or, a good or, way or, for <laughs> preservation. I mean, it's out it, there. It's also a good learning reference. Yeah. yeah, and if you want to do something that that game already does, you have the framework from which to start. But the thing that actually caught my eye was uh, the graphical interface for uploading builds to Steam. It's appropriately named Steam Uploader. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can now uh, do your one-click Unity export Linux win, win, ports and win, win, uh, Windows only, but to Steam. With Wait, Windows only. Nope. Windows only, blood. Uh, uh, Windows Proton. Only. Proton. With a GUI. If you're clicking export on the Unity editor, you can export a Linux version from Windows. <laughs> why are we why are we talking about developing games on Windows on Linux Gamecast? You're the one who brought it up. <laughs> it's in, it's in it's in the show notes in your color, friend. That's what they're using to upload. How dare you use his words against him, you must. <laughs> How dare? Like uh, I said in the notes, it's like, oh, yeah, that one click export Linux version that you have of your game. Mm. Now you can upload it to Steam with a GUI, nice. which was what I was saying. <laughs> sure. But it, 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 it's time to talk about giant spiders. <laughs> Isn't it though? Is it, is it never not a good time to talk about giant spiders? Listen, sp spiders are the deadliest predator in the animal kingdom, obviously. Oh man, them and polar bears. THQ Nordic, Death Brothers 3 is out now for PC. PlayStation 4 X, why are you talking about this? Wow. Well, there's a good reason. It is coming to Linux. Huh. huh. Did, did, yeah, did, did you get like a, wait, what? Well, I, I I mean, like, the name sounded familiar, and I saw a bit of the trailer, I'm like, wait a second, didn't we do, a yeah, we did three chairs at Desperado's the first. So, yes. I guess this tracks? Uh, the game will get three additional missions later, da, da, da. there will be an update this summer, we're running out of summer, Brad, um, adding Mac and Linux support, so... Now, now... Now here, here, here's what I want to know, because THQ Nordic has, has drank the Kool-Aid before. Is this brought to you by Virtual Programming? Or is Virtual Programming still around? <laughs> it's Maybe. probably going to be a very hard sell in the world of Proton. <laughs> I, I, I mean, de depending on if the software people or the business people are making that decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's one of the things that I noticed. It's like, okay, d and games, we're still getting a reasonable uh, variety of them. But when it comes to like the double A's and the triple A games, why are we only getting the strategy ones? Because we're so very strategic. Um, honestly, the Pedro. Wars and Desperados, I, apparently. I am going to be honest with you. It's kind of a practical joke. It's got a lot of hand. Because <laughs> that's one of the very few genres of video games that I really don't like. Well, we, 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 get, we get the strategy games and we get the shooters. And then, no oh, surprise, surprise, coming up. Because we get a bunch of uh, Unity-based isometric RPGs. Well, we get but, all the Total War yeah. because... I don't uh, mind those. I like those. <laughs> Feral has figured out, like, they don't do fuck to these engines. We just, all right, send us another texture pack. There, look, now we have a new Total War. <laughs> whatever. Like, hey, new game. <laughs> right. 
Indeed. <laughs> Although the, the, this 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 one's ain't ain't feral. So what what it actually is remains to be seen. Well, I, the, I'm gonna the... have to like back up with like Pedro. I'm like, you look at THQ Nordic. I'm like, can you port some of that other shit, Brad? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you have like the old THQ proper that you know went bankrupt and everyone else bought their um, IP. They had a lot of great stuff in their IP catalog. It's like, can we have some of that on Linux, please? Hey, this one's got a knife. Look at it. Look, knife action. <laughs> That's a spoon. <laughs> maybe in Canada, oh, maybe. I see you've maybe made knifey spoony. <laughs> this, this is like a wasteland. Oh, it's like it's like it's like real time wasteland. I think it's like satellite rain. That would be the west western yeah, satellite it, it, rain. I think would be the good comparison here. It's a real time strategy uh, commandos. Uh, if you play dog. the game commandos, but in um, the wild west. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like that FMV game, Mad Dog. I know exactly what you. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Mad Dog McCree. <laughs> Mad Dog McCree. Now available on 3DO. Uh, that's gonna do us. <laughs> yeah. Coming up next, isometric Unity based RPGs abound. We're throwing chairs at tyranny. Yeah. Welcome back to Chairquisition, where I have taken over. My reign of terror has begun, and it will be a tyrannical reign, because we're throwing chairs of tyranny. It's done by Obsidian Entertainment, done on the Unity engine. What is it from Obsidian Entertainment, the team behind uh, Pillars of Eternity, Fallout New Vegas, and one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> South Park, The Stick of Truth. Tyranny is a classic styled RPG with a new and original story, shaped and molded by your actions. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, I, I I bought this originally forever ago, and Pedro uh, so Pedro I. <laughs> and I gave uh, Ven a copy that came with a bundle. So oh, no special thanks to Insidia. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't feel too bad then because I, I I knew like forty minutes, and I'm like, yeah, you burned that game, and I'm not coming back. Oh, yeah, spoilers! It, uh, <laughs> indeed. All right. Well, well. I mean, let, let's let's get to it. Ven, how how it run on the Debians? Man, let me tell you how it ran over here on Debian ten. I'm back on that. <laughs> Debian testing too brave decided not to stick with Cent OS 8.1 for other reasons. Go back and watch Wednesday if you want to find out more about that. But Debian 10 Threadripper 1920x, 32 gigs of RAM, NVMe, NVIDIA 2060. Step one for this game for me was Googling how to activate, actively seeking out the Unity Scream of Nope command because this game saw DisplayPort 1 listed, looked me right in the eyes. Told me to fuck off because it wanted to use it. I'm like, but I got Display Port Zero, and he's like, Display Port One, motherfucker. I'm like, but okay, fine. I got the screen, got it set because it opens a little pop up, and I was able to take care of that. It runs, and the human interface device controls. You know, your dribble and your keyboard, everything will work. And let's be honest, that's all you really expect in this type of game. It's isometric type stuff, you know. I just, I, I didn't even try my Nintendo Power Pad. And... To the fun. <laughs> no, not even a little bit. Um, I'm not predisposed to dislike RPGs, man. Like not even in the slightest. Now, granted, like a lot of you at home, I'm a little burnt out on isometric anything after one. Two, three fucking decades of these games but some people aren't you can give me a skyrim job i'm gonna be happy you can give me something like uh we took a look at pillars of eternity a while back i can choke that down i'll be you know begrudgingly but i'm like i can kind of get into this and it's not too bad this i don't know where this falls on that spectrum but i can say their combat system man is so fuck mothering bad they've included a pause mechanic for it right out of the gate and they're like yeah, you got to pause this game in order to do anything with it. With this, And then again, it's also boring. It's very boring. It's bad. Like, you just sit there and boop each other. I, I saw more, like, action and combat with the original EverQuest. Two people going boop and points and points and points. Granted, EverQuest was faster. You shouldn't get bored during combat. But you will, so whatever, man. If you like reading a shot load of like choose your own adventure text, it's got plenty of that, so that's positive. If that's your thing, uh, if you get off on spreadsheet simulation with like a fantasy bent, it's got that. Hey, another bonus, if that's your thing. I wish I could tell you more, you know. Like 
I, I wish Pedro had it. There's a rock I couldn't get past. I spent over an hour trying to get past a rock. I, I, fair enough. I got past the rock, then I just got dead a lot. I did. 95 minutes of getting to the other side of that fucking rock, then dead. There's your fair warning. You know, if this game, it, it, it's not something you can just pick up and have at without having some backstory of how the mechanics of these types of games work. Or, you know, you can, but dead. This, I always look for a game that's going to bridge. Like, uh... I've never been a fan of like Dark Souls games. You know, I know Pedro that, that just loves those games. However, mm-hmm. Code Vein is Dark Souls light, light enough to, I'm like, eh, I can kind of get into this. I can play it for a little bit. This, for this genre, is not that type of game. It, it doesn't, uh, like, it's not a bridge game of any way, shape, form, and fashion. So if you're looking for that type of gateway game for your isometric spreadsheet bullshit simulation, you're going to have to give this one a pass, man. And uh, what's this thing priced at again? And it's not cheap. 30 bucks. That's not too bad. But that is one chair. No, sir. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 32, 64-bit with the 6700K GTX 1080 Ti. Um, yeah, it really, it really likes that secondary monitor, don't it? <laughs> a little That's, bit. It really does um i mean so it's an isometric rpg and if it weren't isometric i'd feel a little disappointed because that's what was on the tin um control wise mouse buttons work and the keyboard shortcuts are pretty standard for like your Baldur's gate style game (sighs) fun wise man obsidian really has made a lot of planescape torment knockoffs haven't they i mean they're pretty good at them yeah that that's kind of their thing right now they used to be called black isle and that's what they did (laughs) Yeah, um, well, I, I mean, you, you had PoE 1, which was billed as a spiritual successor to Planescape Torment, and then you had Torment Tides of Numenera, which was explicitly a Torment game. In, in It brought back mm-hmm. basically all the same creative team from the from Planescape Torment. Um, and then you have uh, Tyranny, which is yet another one of these moral quandary, dialogue-heavy, narrative-driven RPGs. Um, but the best one, the best one of these that, uh, Obsidian has come out with is Pillars of Eternity 2. This is before that. And it it really, it really does show, um, the dialogue options in the game, super deep. There's like all sorts of conversations that you can have with people. I appreciate that they go, went to the lengths of making sure that you always have non-combat options for a lot of the problems. Unfortunately, if you're trying to play a bad guy, like the game suggests you should, you're going to piss a lot of people off and you're going to end up in fights. And oh boy, the the RPG system here is super lacking. A it really bit. it really feels tacked <laughs> on. Com- combats <laughs> really feel like a slog. Uh, Pillars of Eternity 2, um, they do a pretty good job of keeping the fights intense and relatively short. Um, and there's very little, I'm going to wait until I roll the number to smack you on the head because all the target numbers are so high. There's a lot of that in this game. And so fights just become something that you end up dreading there's 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 some there's some interesting attempts to try and blend the narrative components and the isometric action rpg components by giving you combo moves that you can unlock with your party members by inspiring loyalty or fear or both um the problem with that is though you can farm those out pretty quickly and it basically just becomes an op uh, uh exercise and talk to all your npcs exhaust all the dialogue options get the skill points that they can teach you get the combo move they can teach you and then you're done with those guys and you can manage their fear and loyalty there's, there's actually a lot of like loyalty and like like dislike management stuff in here which i think is pretty good but i really do feel like this game deserves a different engine um when you when you look at when you look at like a narrative game like uh planescape torment a lot of its, its successes are in spite of the fact that it's based in dnd second edition not because of it and i think these sorts of games moving forward, they kind of just took, oh, it's an isometric RPG. Oh, it has some like traditional tabletop-esque elements. We have to replicate this in order for the game to be considered complete. I don't really think that would work. I think this would be better as like a choose your own adventure with like some kind of more abstract combat system or if they wanted to go with like the full D&D route, then actually like fully flesh out the combat system, flesh out the RPG mechanics because they feel pretty threadbare. Um Overall, I think I think um, I think uh, Obsidian has definitely done better than this. Uh, it does have a very strong narrative, so if that's your if that's what you're really in for, maybe jack the difficulty up to or down to easy mode, just so you can cruise through the fights. How come you or, didn't get like the Fedora logo? Why did you get the Debian logo? <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> well, uh, no, I like the Debian logo on the tents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, it's 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 better than the Linux Mint logo. I don't know. 
Um, <laughs> any, anywho, uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna give it two chairs. It's well, it, it need two chairs. Yeah, yeah. It, it it needs to figure out what it needs to it wants to be. But this is a game that's been out for a couple years now. So if you like narrative heavy games, go for it. If you don't, mm, skip. Go play Pillars of Eternity too. It's much better. Yeah, and um, well, over here on the 3700X with the GTX 1080, it did launch on the UHD screen instead of the 2K screen like it's supposed to, uh, but it, it like it launched, you saw the black screen, and then as soon as any kind of video started rendering on screen, the window actually moved itself to the 2K screen. It's like, oh, that's new. But it is also a Unity game that doesn't hold 144 hertz at 2560 by 1440. And, I mean, if you're looking at the video version, you know that it has absolutely no reason to when far more demanding games have had no issues on this very box uh, maintaining 144. So something is going on there, and it does sit at 144 most of the time. But every now and then, I'll see it dip to, like, 100-ish, 110. But considering it's this kind of game, and you can pause it at any time, um, I really don't mind the FURPS dipping. Uh, and the controls, well, it's you click a lot, and you have the cursor keys or WAS to move the cur uh, the, uh, the camera around, so that's fine. Oh, I do want to say, don't, don't try to launch Mango, Mango Hut with this. Oh, I didn't try that. No. <laughs> it's not pretty. <laughs> Does it look well, like a yeah, pulverized no. mango? It it wasn't as uh, spastically delicious as uh, trying to do a Wolfenstein Youngblood, but yeah, this one's not having it. Mm. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> but no, for the the fun for me, um, I get it. Um, I played a lot of Icewind Dale and Baldur's Gate from when Obsidian used to be called um, Black Isle and Fallout Two made by the same people go figure um and i do honestly think that for this kind of combat system neverwinter nights was an improvement on that particular formula like a significant improvement of that uh and i think obsidian realized this too and made it so that the focus uh in tyranny was less on the combat and more on the conversations which i suppose will cause a lot of people to not have you know, any interest in tyranny because it's like, though the combat sucks and I can't find any enjoyment in the game anywhere else because I really don't care about the story and I really don't care about anything else. For me, though, I'm usually the gameplay guy and the primary loop here is clearly the conversation, so I can respect what they did with those mechanics. Yes, it will involve reading a lot, but that is the focus of this game. This is about the conversations and like Vena Jordan already said, it's like the combat is bad and it feels tacked on. So, yeah, the, the way you shape, the, like the conversations itself, they allow you to shape like everything around you and everything that happens is based on what you say during those conversations with those people. That is kind of awesome because this is since like Planescape Torment, for me anyway, this is possibly the game that has me caring the most about uh, dialogue at all. And like, there was one fight uh, in particular that as soon as you started um, what a dialogue option appears with like the guard captain saying, oh, they've made it uh, past the river. Um, get, you know, uh, get into defensive lines. And you can just start the fight by saying, those of you who would leave behind orphans, run and you see like two of the opposing team just scatters like yes <laughs> hey man free and, orphans yeah. yeah it's like you know bland as it is i don't really mind the combat too much i've had plenty of it in my time but honestly i was really looking forward to the next big conversation and i tried every single passing rando npc it's like please talk to me i want to talk to you i want to see what you do with this particular conversation so for me it gets three chairs oh hey, because... Audi, there you go all right hey all right hey, hey, yes. hey, hey. <laughs> because oh, it oh. is one of those games no, he's not done. for me anyway that was just warm up <laughs> Oh man! All I, all I gotta say is like after watching the Baldur's Gate three gameplay trailer, I'm so excited for that, especially as a point of comparison. I don't know. To I, Tyranny. I'm, I'm, I do feel like see like when it, 
the second I see a screen like that, I'm like, oh. but to make a note on the combat, I think I could have had an even better effect if I could have just rolled some fucking dice, man. And be like, all right, well, how's that going to figure out? The the thing that bugged me about like OG Pillars of Eternity combat too is they're like trying to do that active real time thing where everything's on a cooldown, and I don't think it works for this style of game. Mm-hmm. If you're, if if you're gonna do that, like full on lean into it, make it like Satellite Rain, make it like Desperados or something. Don't tr- don't try it in like fake turn based with real time. Just do turn based or do real time and make people adapt. Um, yeah, otherwise you get a kind of mess like this where you're waiting for your healing spell to recharge. And it's just not happening. <laughs> Anyways, coming up next, we got we got some hate mail. We're going to talk about why Netflix is the devil. Evil devil Netflix. And I suppose this is the end. If you've made it uh, all the way here with us uh, for yet another week, I'm Jokes really you, I watch this shit on YouTube. I fast forward. Like I'm doing now. At this <laughs> point, yeah. At this point, you're doing it to yourself. No one watches, like... The end of the show. No one watches it. Absolutely no. Do you one. <laughs> ever look at our metrics and see when people tap out? See now, now it it's is... like six minutes in. People tap out. <laughs> it's interesting. That's YouTube, to look That's YouTube though. Well, yeah, that is YouTube, right? Like, ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, I need more blinky lights. Now that we have timestamps, that's pretty much the segment watch. It's like ah, uh, we'll yeah. watch that. Yeah, you can see that. when it picks back up. It's like oh, hello. And I only really know that because if I cock up a timestamp, <laughs> I know about it real quick. Like just wants a little bit on. Like you know what? Now it's five more minutes off. Um, hi. I'm <laughs> that just Stone. takes you. It just takes you to the end of the episode. All right, there you go. <laughs> Fuck you. Your problem's done. <laughs> Speaking about problems done, how can you problems done us? Uh, yes, cr- cr- you can problems done us all the way up and down the street uh, by swinging a pipe over your head, or you can hit the contact button on LinuxGameCast.com and fill out the form. LGC Weekly is the show that you want to send your bit of hate mail to, and we will talk about it right here, right now. You can be like Chris did this week, because uh, Chris decided, you know what? Let's, let's rehash yeah. something from two weeks ago. <laughs> he's he's going to sing the Doom song, all right. So Chris says, Doom, Doom Eternal's de novo anti-cheat software sounds incredibly invasive. I don't care about cheaters. I much prefer that the software I buy to not install hidden stuff that operates selectively, especially at the kernel level. That also be his privacy. Amazon doesn't need any more of our data, and certainly not just because we want to play a video game, especially in single-player mode. I didn't realize so many companies did these types of anti-cheat software practices. It should be be illegal all right anyone want to take a crack at this first i mean the the new anti cheat wasn't even the most um invasive one because it only started when you started the game and when you closed the game it went away are you gonna On bring up hand, what was it called like star force or some shit like that valorant no remember the old school like secure rom Oh, Sekirom, yeah. 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 The, the, or get off my lawn with your itself. hipster ass or, DRM. Or, or just, yeah, just the straight up rootkit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, no, uh, like stuff like Valorant, which uh, it runs on boot, it stays running the whole time, always on, always connected, always ring zero. So, yeah. No, um, De Nuvo actually went and like, sick. oh, Linux people, sorry, are bad. We're going to make sure that in the future this doesn't happen. You know, I think the game industry and De Nuvo both know at this point, this is, it's effectively there to like attempt to protect week one sales. That's about it. It, it, I mean, to to some extent, it's also there just to like placate the shareholders who are concerned. I heard about the internet and the and the, and the piracy. <laughs> the internet, people are what going, be that? <laughs> people are going on the Casa and they're downloading the Whereas. The Whereas. The Whereas. The where the Whereas. <laughs> where is what? Where is the Whereas? <laughs> yes, where is the Whereas? Uh, but yeah, no, seriously, the the <sighs> new one was bad because any kind of DRM or uh, anti-cheat shit that shows up with a video game is usually very much unwanted and it really only ever hurts the people who actually paid for the game um so yeah no let's just 
Where are you at? Do something Um, better. So (laughs) like on Linux, I mean, outside of like, occasionally we'll get some DRM on like steam DRM. That's pretty much the extent of it, isn't it? I mean, you you can make the argument that there's like account based DRM. Like there's a bunch of games that you can play on Linux, but you need an account which costs money or some kind of subscription fee. That's also pretty common. That's a pretty common form of DRM as well. Um, Minecraft Consoles. made yeah. physical well, I mean, DRM. <laughs> phys, phys, physical DRM is a hundred percent a thing. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, a lot of, uh, to me, a lot of the Denuvo stuff is a lot of just security theater, right? Like it's meant to put up a fuss. It's meant to like make people complain, and so they can say like, "Hey, look at all these people who can't use our software." That means that the anti cheat is working. We're keeping all those dirty cheaters out. Um, I, I don't know. Do- Doom is Doom is kind of a weird place because or space because yes. There is a multiplayer game for Doom. No, I don't think too many people are playing it beyond the people who just love Doom multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Most people are in it for the single player experience. That said, I don't, I don't know. Um, d- 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 it looks. It sounded to me when I read their press release like the Denuvo was offering a lot of lip service, and it's not just Denuvo we have to blame. We have to blame Bethesda for saying like, "Hey, we should include this with our software in the first place." Denuvo is just trying to make a product. Yeah, it's a bad product, but it's ultimately on the people engaging with that product and pushing it onto the end users that we have to really be concerned about. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I mean, when it comes to like DRM and stuff like that, if it's out of my way, I don't worry about it. I have big honking concerns with it when it's with stuff other than games. You know, my games, like I don't have a lot of personal information or anything like that. But what factors does that open up? You know? Yeah. What was the uh, if they do Riot get Games? Hacked, it's what like... game does Riot Games make? <laughs> League uh, of Legends. League of Legends. Right. Didn't they like to say they're going to roll out some new rootkit based DRM type stuff? And they're like, "There's this is the only way we can do it." The internet's like, you know what? Fuck you. It's we'll the same play. one that's in Valorant. Yeah, yeah it's the that... one that they've been trialing with that game. Yeah. I mean, I mean, but that, that's kind of like what Denuvo was saying in their release too. They're like, "Oh, this is the root level exploits or root level um, and it's the only way we can actually do it." Mm. Mm. multiplayer i I get and i said it when we were talking about doom uh single player bullshit man you you can get fucked when it comes to that because yeah it's like stay it's a single player game you're supposed to be enjoying it the way you want it to you know the single player yeah yeah i already paid you money stop Fucking with the money that I paid you. God damn it. Listen, but, if you well, want to quit the- doing that, you need to go into the third menu after the fourth, <laughs> then disable the uh, some of the well, data. Can't completely disable this. Need to be all, always online, but it's uh, always online. I, I mean, and at the end of the day, you agree to it because you don't own your software. You're just licensing it. That's, that's right. What that, that's what that EULA you ignore at the beginning of every game does. On that giant, beautiful ball of happiness. <laughs> and a cheery outlook on the future. Hey. We're gonna cue the music. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for hopping on the SS Choo Choo Tannic for another week. If you want to get in touch with me, I am at Vin Stone on Twitter. That's where I hang out, man. Uh, send me a note. Right back. You want to slide into the DMs? Uh, unless I'm following you, I'll never be able to read them. But hey, man, that's brilliant. Keep being awesome. Choo Choo Tannic made me just think of like that scene from Titanic where Leonardo DiCaprio's ca- painting Kate Winslet. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm no, thinking no, 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 about no. that. Okay, all right. A, 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 except it's Alec Baldwin and George Carlin. And okay. George Carlin is the guy getting painted. I'm thinking about Ralph Wiggum uh, going, I choo choo drown you. Ah, all right. Well, if you want to drown Ankle me, floats. you can start by following me on on, on Twitter at, at the Burning Fool. I'm George. Floaty McAnkles. Ed. Floaty McAnkle face. It's it, no, 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 no. It, it, or, or like knees. It's like those those uh, knee those fo- knee photos that look like their faces and the face swap thing fucks them up. Yeah. I don't know. The hashtag uh, ankle floaties for Jack. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter, and that's about it. Seriously, shot at me on Twitter, I'll probably shot back. What's your mastodon? Uh, at unaccounted for as well, but it's the actual number four. 
on Go ahead and hit him there, man. He needs to use his mask on, and he's <laughs> incapable of not like checking out a notification. He's got that issue, so just hit him up there. Mess, mess his day up. You're like, ugh. So, uh, the only notifications I get from Mastodon is whenever someone reports something. This is oh when, when, because that just means you can straight up talk shit to his face and he'll never know. <laughs> Let's roll some I mean, credits. I, I mean, I do that anyways. He just ignores me, so it works out. Huh? Credits! We gotta, yes, it is. I don't know. I think we're a pretty basic profanity translator, all things considered. Uh, but we, we gotta I think... think we uh, right with the profanity this week. Wait, well... Fuck you, man. We gotta thank all of our fucking producers. Hey, man, it's like, episode C Dicks. C Dicks. It's like it's like C Dicks. C Dicks run, run Dicks run. We gotta thank Capolo and Arthur and Empty, the Atomic Ass, Mike G, Bob Bram, Aldius, Matt Geek, Scoot, Frosty the Clawman, Drummer Seven, Lutris, Miss Fox Dowd, and dot, 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 the rest dot, of the producers. Dot, dot. We never thank like, God. Seriously. All of the you producers out there, you all are it, crazy. You got Colsta, you, you got Massive, you got Nicole, Nibbles, Craig, Kai Linux, Cass, Sildat, Colin, Ryan, Scott, Matt, System T, Linux Doom, Joel Angel, Master Tark, Thomas, Bram, Gonzo 2000, Jupiter Broadcasting, Martin B. K, Jill and Steve, Leonardo, not even trying that one, Kim, Prolic, Raspberry, <laughs> Linux New, I need to update that, Abstraction, Das Geek, Lucid Links, some shameless plugs. I got Our a lot of Linux, baby! <laughs> Nixon's yeah. Pyramid. Yeah. That's a new would you, show. Would, would you would you would you watch would you watch a movie where like Richard Nixon came back as a mummy to like haunt people? No, but I'd watch a movie of Nixon Richard Nixon came back as a pyramid. Le just just a pyramid, just a stationary pyramid. No mouth, no words. <laughs> it's a silent film, you monster. Five dudes.